A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Tuesday edition of the show. I'm Yemi Adebar. As usual, I don't do this alone. My partner, Austin Okona Akpan, will be joining us any minute. And uh, before he does, let me give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight. Tonight, we will be talking about the just concluded 2023 African Cup of Nations uh, qualifiers, the draws, the Super Eagles drawn in Group A. So we know our foes now as it stands. So we'll look at that. We'll do an X-ray of what it will take to qualify for the next edition of the Biennial Tournament, which will uh, be hosted by Cut the Voix. We will also talk about the English Premier League, a game currently going on as we speak. We'll try and look at the Nigeria Professional Football League, while we also uh, take some reactions, pre-match reactions from a host of managers in the English Premier League. Then we'll also look at uh, we'll also look at uh, the big bout coming up this weekend. Uh, of course, blockbuster British heavyweight boxing fight between Tyson Fury and Dillian White. We'll talk about that. Uh, and, as, and as it stands, Austin is right there. So, of course, he'll be able to give us all the scoop we need to have with regards to that. So, Austin is here now, and, and he joins us. So, Austin, always good to do this with you. Well, the greetings to you, Yemi, and of course our viewers joining us from different parts of the world. You read out the lineup for the program, but right here in the United Kingdom, it's all about that big game between Liverpool and Manchester United, which in a way, Liverpool is making it look like a very easy game. Manchester United struggling right from the first 10 minutes of the game. Luis Diaz with the first goal, beautiful running by Mo Salah, put the ball in, and then he finished finally. Um, more questions as regards the positioning of Harry Maguire uh, leading to that first goal. And the second was the beauty. It was made in Africa, I mean, a Sadio Mane with a beautiful pass. Mo Salah with a first touch, brought it down. It was so sweet, and the goal, sweet at Liverpool 2, Manchester United 0, half time. All right, so situation report, Austin is right there, it's his tough, and of course, we have to sit back and listen when he talks about all of that. Before we go any further, let's quickly introduce our partner in the Lagos studio. He joins us and will contribute to everything we've been talking about, uh, even that game that Austin uh, just described to us in the Lagos studio with me. Kende Idris makes a return. Greetings to you, Kende. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show. How good to be here. I'm good to make your return, like you said. Um, always a nice time. Uh, you, Austin, it's always uh, very lovely. And uh, uh, for the draws you touched on, Lucas Radebe, Solomon Kalu, two greats uh, who played football at the highest level for Africa, outside of Africa. And then uh, they, 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 they lightened up the stage. And then we had the draws where <laughs> when we start to talk about it, uh, some groups are, uh, will get our attention, really. Definitely, definitely. All right. Uh, since that is out of the way, let's give you an official confirmation, even though Austin has told you already. But an official confirmation is halftime. Uh, probably the game would have started by now, but halftime before we came into the studio. So, situation report at Anfield. This is the score right about now. It's 2 nil, And uh, just like Austin said, Liverpool making it look easy. Everything that could go bad has gone bad for Manchester United. Ten minutes into the game, Paul Pogba gets injured. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo couldn't play because of the tragic incident that happened in his family. And uh, you look at the Manchester United bench, all kinds of names, you know. And Phil Jones, Phil Jones, on a day like this, Phil Jones was thrust in Oof, uh, really. Uh, I mean, I could feel the pain of Manchester United fans. And you only fear that it could get worse, Austin. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, the way they approached the first half, the, the way Keoles played with the handbrake on, could hardly straight passes together. Liverpool busted from start to finish, had nine goals, uh, 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 nine shots at goal, three on target, Manchester United zero. Liverpool hardly broke a sweat, you know. So uh, it might just get worse. But, yeah, I mean, look, we've seen 
uh, more scary times in football. Maybe Manchester United uh, get into the dressing room, get the right words, and might just come back and, and turn it around. Don't forget, uh, former coach Alex Ferguson is right there at the stands, you know, watching. They might just want to do this one for him, but with what we've seen in the first half, um, if they don't do something to turn it around, it might just go from bad to worse for Manchester United. <laughs> okay, this is not in his head. He's not going to talk now. No, no, uh, no. Let's have let's have some mercy <laughs> on United. Also, let me pass the bait to you. Let's talk about Otis Ugly on yeah. the show. Is in the news? Yeah, you know, I, I know he's got some quality, and and I'm not surprised that a men's basketball team has said, "Hey, come, let's let's work with you." He's done a lot of good work with the D Tigers. Definitely, he's going to, he's going to be missed. So it means the Nigeria Basketball Federation must find a way now to find a reliable replacement. Uh, when the previous coach was leaving and Otis came, we had some doubts, but he was able to, you know, stabilize the team, you know, make them a winning team. So now he's been named uh, the head coach of Alabama A and M. Um, I think it's in some way it's progress, you know, because a lot of people argue that the men's game is more competitive. He also knows the terrain. So um let's see what he's going to do with this one but i thought he, he had a good program with the d tigers even when he reshuffled the team you could tell that they were still playing to to his pattern to his instruction and he's always calm he's got a man that i like so much you know i remember when i spoke to him he said look austin i'm in nigeria to try and see how i'm going to put my name in the record books and did he do just that yeah me and idris i think he did you know particularly with the way he, he brought these ladies together i don't forget there was a time we had in the Demadu, and in the, the left the scene. We, um, even when we we're thinking, how is this team going to cope? Uh, when uh, what's the name again? Uh, left, left, left the team. The lady in France, her name beats me now. Uh, Evelyn Akato. You know, he somehow found a way to you know put the team together. And to an extent, maybe we might just want to say the basketball federation did their own part. Uh, they're getting ready for. Uh, for they had their, their board meeting, I'm sure part of what they will deliberate is to find a way to, you know, get a good coach for the D Tigers that will, that will you know, uh, sustain the good work that Coach Otis Hewley did. But on our part, let's just wish the coach all the best as he takes this new role right there at Alabama A&M. All right, that's it. Um, uh, Idris, uh Chipping a word or two. Yeah, uh, it's a simple. It's a developer power of talent. I yes. agree with Austin, 100%. Yeah, I totally do agree too. Uh, he, he had he had a bliss whole time uh, with the Data Grace. And I saw how the ladies, the girls trusted him all the way. All the women said, no, uh, women's sports, it should be women, not ladies. Uh, the way they trusted him. And like uh, uh, Austin mentioned, some names who were very key, uh, very marked to the squad left. And we thought probably they might get to, you know, uh, uh, be strong, but it will take a while. They weather the storm and all of that. But it was seamless. The replacement, the adjustment, it was seamless, and it was all to the brilliance of Otis Huli, who you know uh, already noticed you know this ladies will leave and already prepared a replacement. A very comfortable replacement came in, and we had some other names speaking the batting and becoming as huge as the likes of Evelyn, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know who, who left the team. So it got to a point. The process was trusted. The coach was trusted by the women, and they just went on doing great things. The last Afro basket, you remember, almost 70% of those who were even at the Olympics were not there. But they had girls who, uh, women from here who played, and a few sprinkle from the Olympics. And they had, they, they still went ahead to do good. They won the Afro basket, defending it successfully, which is what it is really did with that team. And we love it. We'll miss him, but definitely it, it's growth. Uh, the man has moved to the next level and we wish him all the very best. If you give us uh, something good, whenever you're leaving, whether it's uh, sad uh, for us to, to lose you, we still wish you all the very best. And that's what we're doing with Otis Huli. All right, so led the team to three Afro basket titles. We were number one in Africa, 14th in the world, and um, also helped us to qualify for some major tournaments. So we'll see what happens. Of course, uh, the MBBF will show us uh, uh, what they want to do and how they want to go. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, Austin. Let's talk about the draws held today. Um, 
we still have a sore taste in our mouth, really. Uh, when we talk about the Nations Cup, when we talk about the World In fact, I don't even, a lot of people don't even want to hear the World Cup right about now. But that's it on your screen. I'll just, I, I, I'll let you just steamroll us through the draws, then we talk about it. Of course, there will be special emphasis on the group that has Nigeria. But there you go, Austin. Um, the uh, AFCON qualifiers, really. We, we have to move on. Anyway, so, but... so um, 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 I, in a way, in a way, you know, by the way, it was a good draw ceremony. Uh, shout out to the legends, uh, Lucas Fradabe, and of course, Solomon Kalu, uh, whose country is hosting 2023. Uh, Group A has gone to Nigeria, Syria alone, Guinea Bissau, South Tome and Principe, and Mauritius. Now, we shouldn't be so quick to say, is relatively easy. It's a tricky group. We remember so clearly what Syria Leone did to Nigeria in Benin City, Yemi yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Idris. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you guys will still remember. Yeah. It was 4 0 and then it ended 4 4. We also saw the progress Syria Leone made at the AFCON. So these are the days of African football where if you blink, you start asking questions. So they sh should approach this one like, they are drawn against Morocco and Ghana, you know. But if you take a look at even the game against Guinea-Bissau at the AFCON, was a tricky encounter, but somehow with strategy and determination, we were able to pass through them. And the, the, the thing about these countries, when they play big team and meet them again, they learn more lessons than the big team. Why the big team will struggle not to be complacent, they will go back and find ways that they will hurt that big team. So Group A... Um, Yes, I agree with some pundits that have come out to say it's relatively easy, but I'll say it's tricky. It's a tricky group. And with everything I mean, you mentioned, I was seeing with Nigerian football in the last five months, we cannot but just approach this with every form of seriousness uh, right there at the uh, AFCON 2023 qualifier. Let's take a look at Group B. It was a whole long group down to Group K and L. We'll just run through it. Group B has got Burkina Faso, Togo, Cape Verde, and Eswatini. To see what they can do, would like to see new teams at the AFCON group. She has got Cameroon, Kenya, Namibia, and Burundi. 2023 AFCON qualifiers Group D, Egypt. Uh, they made it to the final, but lost it to the Terenga Lions of Senegal. They will take on Guinea. There's also Malawi and Ethiopia in that Group D. In Group E, there's Ghana, Madagascar, Angola, Central Africa Republic. For me, another tricky group. Let's move on to Group F. Where we've got uh, um, Algeria, Uganda, Niger Republic, and Tanzania. Group G is Mali, Congo, Gambia, and South Sudan. Yami, I'm going to pass it on to you to take us through Group H. All right, Group H, you have uh, the host, Cote d'Ivoire. So it's sort of a bonus for this group because obviously the Ivorians are true yeah. already as the host of, of the competition. So Cote d'Ivoire, Zambia, Comoros, and Lesotho in Group H. In group I, you have the Congo DR, you have Gabon, Mauritania, and Sudan. That's in Group I. Then in Group J, you have Tunisia, Equatorial Guinea, Libya, and Botswana. And uh, in Group L, you also have uh, these teams that will come up. Okay, Group uh, Group K. Uh, <laughs> I was jumping the gun. Uh, group K, you have Morocco, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and uh, Liberia. This is going to be a proper slug fest uh, in this one. Then in Group L, you have uh, defending champions, Senegal, Benin Republic, Mozambique, and Rwanda. All right. Um, also, I'll get back to you, but <sighs> Idris, we have to talk about Nigeria. Yeah. I, 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 you know, it beats me. Do you think we're going to be able to pick the pieces before we go into these qualifiers? I think we can. Whether we pick up the pieces or not, we've got a formidable group. See, these teams look like uh, one of those uh, groups where no matter how worse you are, you should be able to pull through. But it beats Especially me, if two teams are qualified. Yes. It beats me when some Nigerians just comfortably say we should be able to pull out from this group. This is not the Super Falcons. 
This is the super egos. If we were to be the super falcons being drawn in such group, I would just go home and sleep. Because at the end of the qualifiers, we will be there. The super egos in recent time, even with the Geno Raw, has not, because they say Geno Raw qualified us for majors, has not inspired such confidence. He just pointed out Syria alone, Nigeria, 4-0 four, four, uh, four first half in favor of Nigeria, and then we considered four in the second half. This is Guinea-Bissau. We, we know what Guinea-Bissau can do on their own day. And this is over two legs. So... If you are not prepared for it, as much as I feel we have a formidable group, whether we pick up the pieces or not, if you are not prepared for it, qualifiers come with shockers. If we don't do that, then we might just have our wounds, uh, you know, getting to lick our wounds again. And that's the worry for me. I'm not worried about the teams in our group. I'm worried about our own team. How ready are you? Hope you are not already complacent with the names you're seeing on the group. Sao Tome and Principe with Mauritius, Guinea-Bissau, Syria, Lone, they are not at our level, but this is the qualifiers. And the smaller teams always know, what do I have to lose? You beat me, it's no story. I get to beat you, then it trends. So they already pile pressure on you because you are the team to beat. And we are the team to beat in this group. So it's a worry already for me. Like I said, it's not a jab. It's not a disrespect to the Super Eagles, but this is not the Super Falcons. Okay. All right. Um, I I'm enjoying the 24 team format. Yep. But then again, I'm afraid of complacency. I don't know if Austin shares my views. I'm afraid of complacency because the setup... A lot of people accused those who made it 24 that they want it to be easy for the bigger teams to qualify. But you still have to play football. You still have to yeah. play football yeah. to qualify. The fact that two teams will qualify, if you decide not to play, then you, you don't get to qualify. But do you agree? I'm enjoying the 2014 tournament, but do you agree with those who say, yeah, they just want the big teams to qualify? I don't think so. I think it will also be, be a good opportunity to see teams such as Comoros come to the mm -hmm. AFCON mm -hmm. again. They made their debut uh, right there in Cameroon. Be good to see if they if they can sustain the momentum that we saw, you know, right there at the AFCON recorded their first ever win against the Black Stars. You know I mean the Black Stars of mm -hmm. Ghana? You know, and that's why I said, look, we shouldn't just even try to blink. I'm talking about every big team now, if not because uh, Cote d'Ivoire will just get the automatic qualification. I'll tell them to be careful because they're also in a very tricky group. I read about two or three other groups that are tricky. Uh, it goes to just show one thing that the small teams also want to be part of the party. What I would think is just to make the big teams qualify. No, it's an opportunity for the small teams to get counted. And I think they showed just that uh, with the first 24 uh, team format that we saw in Cameroon. So it would be beautiful to see Eswatini at the at the AFCON. Yeah. Um, Syria Leone went there and they, they, they flexed muscles. They right. they actually showed the big boys that we can compete, we can push you all the way. Gracious goodness. You saw what the Crotorial Guinea also did in Cameroon. So I love it. I love the fact that it has made it a very competitive space in African football and the big teams now know. They know that you will be disgraced, you'll be embarrassed if you try to underrate any of these guys that attack small teams. We won't be quick to say, oh, there are no longer minnows in African football. People will argue that there's two small teams, but the big teams, time and time again, have shown that, look, they can also be small in their thinking if they don't give the right approach to football on the pitch. And that's the beauty of the game, you know, where you blink and you're asking questions. Well, we've seen these things with club football in Europe, I don't want to let Chelsea fans remember what Brentford did to them right there at Stamford Bridge. You don't <laughs> want to remind the Italians what North Macedonia did to them. We're seeing it in Europe. It's beginning to also manifest in Africa that Ghana went to the AFCON and couldn't even win a match. You know, it's tough to to understand it, but that's where we're going now with African football. And for me, it's even beyond this 2014 format. I mean, it's the fact that Everybody comes out and they're thinking, look, we've got equal opportunities. That, for instance, yeah, I mean, if you are the technical advisor of Guinea-Bissau, you, you cannot fear the Super Eagles. You will not. You will, in fact, the things happening to the Super Eagles will motivate you when you meet. If you are the coach of Syria, Leon, you will go back and look at the records. Well, we agree that stats don't play football, but records in a way shape football. And Syria Leon will say, look, we went to we went to the uh, to their place in Benin City and they couldn't beat us. We went to the AFCON and almost gave the same impression that Nigeria gave. 
That's football for you. So I love what's going on. Let's just wait to see what what May we produce, and then we'll wait for the tournament proper. Yeah. All right, we we'll wait for the tournament <laughs> proper. Uh, maybe the fear of non -quali not qualifying virtually non-existent. All right, we're going to go on a break. We are not done with the Afghan qualifiers just yet. When we return from that break, we'll talk some more on uh, the draws done today. Uh, we'll move on to other things. But let's go on that break and return for more on Sports Tonight. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, we're still on the matter, talking about the just-concluded draws for the 2023 African Nations Cup qualifiers. Ken Idris is with me, my partner, Osno Kulakman, uh, still uh, with us as well. Ken Idris, you, you didn't want us to forget. You were quick to point it out as we were going on that break. You didn't yeah. want us to forget that there are some things to look at in some of those yeah. other groups. But yes. do any of those groups qualify as a group of debt? Uh, I think it will be Group K if we are too, because Morocco, South Africa, Zimbabwe, if you're taking those three into context, at a point, Zimbabwe is a strong force when it comes to African football. South Africa, definitely don't uh, take to note what happened to them recently, not qualifying for majors. For Morocco, they already had the World Cup. That tells you how massive they are. Then for Liberia, they could ruffle feathers, you know, at different points. We've seen them do that several. So if there is to be any group that we should target group, then that should be group K, a uh, group of that. And I guess um, that group is getting my full attention. Another group is group D, Egypt, Guinea, Malawi, Ethiopia. This is the reason why Egypt, Malawi, Ethiopia, and Guinea all were at the Nations Cup. We saw how the Malawians, they build up to the Nations Cup, so beautiful, which made a lot of person want to see what the Malawians would do at the Nations Cup. Though they didn't do much, but we saw that for Ethiopia, <laughs> they came to the Nations Cup first, they left first and all of that. But this tells you, just recently, these teams were at the AFCON. So they know what it is to be at the highest level, so it will make it a very, uh, you know, huge one. Then um, if you go to Group E, Ghana, Madagascar, Angola, Central African Republic, Ghana, Angola is going to be a very tough one. Ghana, Central African Republic, recently, CAR came to Nigeria, right there at the Teslim Balogo Stadium. Don't, don't remind me. <laughs> don't just, don't remind me. To beat me. Nigeria against all odds, against... I guess it should be 1,000 to 1, you know, when you're 10, tabling, 000, 10, 10 000 to, 1, to 1, if you're putting down the odds. And they won. Late, late go. That sung the hearts of, you know, everybody. And for Madagascar, two, uh, two editions, they were at the Nations Cup. And they want to be back there. They want to show, uh, you know, that they can also, you know, just at that level. Right. So it, it, Group D, Group E, and then Group K aside, you know, definitely Group A will get our attention as Nigeria. So those three groups, uh, you know, Proper, proper looking to other groups. I, I think uh, almost straight that we'll find, you know, uh, we can just say qualifier like group L, Senegal, and one other person. <laughs> it's okay. almost sure. So uh, those three groups and then the group A, which Nigeria is involved, they will get my attention fully. Uh, okay. All right. All right. We're, we're about to move on, but of course now I have to pass a bit into Austin, who's going to take us through the Nigeria Professional Football League. But but do you share Kane's views about those some of those groups? not being easy to call you know there was a time we just look at those groups and say this and this will qualify but he has mentioned some groups sure. that you 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 will think a little before you say this and this will qualify particularly with what we've seen in the last you know in the last year in african football you you want to be careful you want to go and look at their last record you want to go look at head-to-head -head meets and be sure that you are not just, you know, bluffing because I'm sure a lot of pundits would have oh, come on. Is it not Ghana, Comoros? Uh, what would, well, what is Comoros in Africa football? And then we all got stunned. But I like this group. It's, it's, it looks so open that anything can qualify. It's Group G. Look at Group G where you've got Mali, Congo, Gambia. Let's not forget what Gambia did at the Afcon. And I'm, I told you in my initial analysis that for these countries that came to the AFCON and did the unthinkable, they can only work towards sustaining the momentum. And then there's also South Sudan. So I look at that group and what we saw with Mali at the AFCON and a little bit of what we saw for, at the World Cup qualifiers, they begin to look like a lukewarm team again. They need to pick up themselves and tell themselves that they actually can be a big team in African football. So Group G just comes to me as a team where 
any team that plays their best football can actually qualify uh, for for the for the Afcon. If not for uh, the hosting rights that Cote d'Ivoire has got, Group H would have also been yeah. another group where you cannot, you know, throw um, uh, some some analysis because Zambia is a team that's got some pedigree in African football. Cote d'Ivoire, we know their story. Like when you expect them, we expect the elephants to actually show that they can stamp their feet and get everyone shaking. They don't do that. And what we've seen of Comoros now, <laughs> you never say never when they're fighting out to play with you. So that's about it. And if you, if you mix my analysis and that of Ken Bay Idris, you could tell that it's over and around the fact that African football is getting more competitive. It's unpredictable. So for teams that really want to prove their status as, as top teams, they must prove it. When I looked at Pot 1 today during the draw, I was saying, hmm, some of these teams here deserve to be in Pot 2. I don't want to call names <laughs> unless they go back and restructure and make sure that they do the right things that can take their, their football to so that level where they were before they got the respect. And you know, when you talk about respect, you need to keep doing what you're doing for the respect to go on. I think that's where we, should, we can leave it for uh, the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. You can get that conversation going on on our Twitter page, on Twitter, our channels, underscore sports. So just send us an email to sports tonight at channelstv.com. We'll continue to have that conversation until May comes when we're going to start the qualifiers for the AFCON that will take place in Cote d'Ivoire. Let's get on with the show now. Yemi mentioned it. Let's talk about it. The Nigeria Professional Football League. What a story, Yemi. Rivers United. They mean business like never before. But it's still a tale of Rivers United wins and then Plato United also go on to win. <laughs> it's looking competitive. We like yeah. it. That's the, the Nigeria Professional Football League for you. But let's just take a look at uh, some midweek fixtures in the league. I think we're already... Getting close to it now, match day 24, Katsina United is still trying to, you know, recover from everything that happened in that game against Kano Pillars. They'll be playing at home against Shooting Stars, Lobby Stars. We'll take on Gombe United. Gombe United, they other Aqua United to a 1-1 draw in their last match. Quara United will take on Abia Warriors. Niger Tornadoes will host Enugu Rangers. Match day 24 of the MPFL Rema Stars will take on Dakada. Aqua United will hope to get back to winning ways when they host Nasarawa United right there at Gospel Akwabu Stadium in New York. Aimba, ah, what a story. We'll take on Kano Pillars. This one, big, big, big Aimba. We thought they were going to push and, you know, get what is needed against Rivers United. But Rivers United, just too strong. They have their eyes fixed on the title. Eyes on the prize. They're not blinking. Let's see what they can do. Can they go all the way? Struggling Heartland. If there's anything you want to pin relegation on right now, the moment in the MPFL, that will be the Nazi Millionaires. They've had a terrible season. They will be taking on Inform Plates to United. And then MFM will take on Wikitory Sunshine Stars. We will take on uh, Inform Rivers United. Kende Idris, there you have it. March day 24 of the MPFL. March day 24 already. Uh, you already seeing signs of, of teams that can likely go on to win this title or teams that want to go play on the continent or even the one that everyone dreads relegation yeah yeah i'm already seeing uh the likes of atlant casino uh it seemed like nothing uh, can can pull them out of there mfm uh, a bit uh, you know in that mix too but you know it extends uh Dakada and the likes um for the continental tickets I i'm looking at the table and i'm thinking okay Rivers United, Plato United, Let, let's leave these two at one end and let's go, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, down the, the table. Rangers, Remo, Quara, Sunshine. I think this, this, this remaining uh, 14 games there about will be massive. Uh, I'm looking at uh, Quara playing Abia Warriors and you want to see where Abia Warriors is on the table. They are a struggling team and Quara wants to get her maximum point. If Quara gets to pick that point and you're looking at Rangers playing Niger Tornadoes, Niger Tornadoes this season have shocked so many teams. So Quara looking to win, uh, you know, uh, Abia Warriors and hoping teams like Rangers get to lose point and they pull up. So we're talking of proper fight building up to the end of the season for continental ticket and proper struggle for teams right there at the bottom. I'm having a feeling like um, different from what it is out there where at this point, if you're playing teams in the relegation zone, 
you might have yourself to blame. But in the MPFL, it seems like teams in the relegation zone are not even ready to pull out from there. They keep losing points both home and away. This weekend tells us a lot of story. I mean, the weekend just passed. So I, I, I've already, uh, you know, yeah, marked games that I will be seeing. Yes, I want to see everything, but Quara Abia Warriors, definitely. Niger Tornadoes, Rangers. Red Monsters against Dakada. The reason why I penned down this game is just to see perfect good football both teams knows how to put the uh, ball on the ground pass it around get the beautiful goals for aqua united nasarawa i will see that but it won't get my full attention any bacano anywhere in the world like a colleague of mine will say this is the biggest game in the world when this game gets to start i don't care whatever football being played around the world then there is the sunshine against the rivers that will be a massive one sunshine i'm asking a simple question what is the motivation for this team? It seems like the team is not getting proper welfareism, proper, you know, uh, um, being taken care of, but they still get the points, uh, you know, as they go. Rivers United, they've got their work cut out. I'm having a huge scare because Play 2 is doing everything possible to get their own points and hope that Rivers United gets to drop point because they are four points behind. And I'm seeing a game, uh, you know, playing Sunshine away might just be that. But Rivers, well trusted this season, they've done, they've held their right. own. For MFM Wiki Tourist, that would also get my attention. I'm a Lagos person, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm always okay. rooting for MFM. <laughs> All right, quick one before we leave the Nigeria Professional Football League. Is it just a two-horse race? You don't see anybody getting it. It's looking like that. Um, the third uh, right here on the table, Rangers, is ten points behind second. That is 14 points behind first. So uh, we have 14 games to go. Yes, you can say the MPFL can be so tricky. Two games, three games can change the whole narrative, but this is hard. The two most informed teams, Rivers and Play 2, they don't look like they are slowing down yet. Yes, you can talk about last two games for Play 2 has not been the Play 2 we know, but they still look like the strongest. For Rangers, okay. they look like they will still drop points. So two horse race at the top, at the bottom, <laughs> I mean third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I think that is where we should put all our attention. Okay. All right. Let's leave it at that. Of course, we'll be here tomorrow to take you through the results and the implication of those results, especially the standings on the table. Let's travel to Austin. It's tough now. And take a look at what is going on. English Premier League, Liverpool, Manchester United. Liverpool making it look easy. It's 3-0 now. Yeah. All three Liverpool forwards have scored. Luis Diaz on the score sheet. Mohamed Salah on the score sheet. Sadio Mane on the score sheet. They even had a goal chopped off. VAR chopped off one goal. Uh, it probably would have been four. But as a situation report, 73 minutes of football played. And it's hard to see a way back for Manchester United, Austin. It's very difficult. The has set up the money uh, so well and the Senegal is forward at the first time low finish into the bottom corner to make it Liverpool 3, Manchester United 0. It, so for me, this is game over already. Let's just hope that it doesn't get you know, worse for Manchester United with more goals, you know. Uh, but Liverpool, it is what it is. We, we know their firepower going forward and uh, the entire forward line now registered a goal. Uh, Diaz had a goal, um, disqualified, um, disallowed in the 35th minute year VAR, uh, I think it was for offside. So, we knew it was going to be difficult for Manchester United, but we're just hoping that some level of mental work, we get it going for the Red Devils. But with the way they approach the first half, we said it that it's going to be very difficult. So Liverpool, you know, picking up from where they stopped in the first half and they're going all the way. So um, I'm not surprised we knew it was going to be this way, but let's just hope that it doesn't get... Now it's worse. Let's just hope that it doesn't get worse for Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. so take us through the fixtures. Yeah. Uh, matches for tomorrow, it appears like mm. this one has been decided already. Although yeah. stranger things have happened in football, uh, case in point, Newcastle and Arsenal, 4-0, mm -hmm. and they came back. I don't see that happening in this one, but just we have to respect ourselves and say, well... I things know. can, ha I things can happen. Analysis, but, mm -hmm. but if you look at it, the, the time, uh, 
being played now, it's very, very difficult because Manchester United have not given us that sort of spark, you know, that you'd expect them to, you know, start a comeback. Well, it's football. Anything can happen, but not against this Liverpool team that also got their eyes on the title. And it's all about putting pressure on Manchester City, who, by the way, will be busy. So let's take a look at the fixtures uh, for tomorrow in the English Premier League. Manchester City uh, will be busy. Chelsea will host... The Arsenal, Arsenal, and their fans believe that they lost six points in their last two games, losing to Brighton and Southampton. Uh, but you know, when you when you have this sort of derbies, it can just go anywhere. So maybe the Gunners might just pick themselves back up against Chelsea. I mean, they can reason that if Brentford can go to Stafford Bridge and win big, that they can also. Everton will take on Leicester City, Newcastle United. We hope to continue uh, in the league when they take on Crystal Palace. By the way, Crystal Palace. Uh, uh, Vieira said, look, they could do. They will do everything possible to finish the league on a high. Manchester City will take on Brighton. Wednesday's fixtures in the English Premier League. A lot of talking points as regards Chelsea and Arsenal. Let's listen to Thomas Tuchel. He's also reacting uh, just before that game. Should have maybe had a goal against Real Madrid. He should have had one. It's a bit uh, missing, missing the luck. But it's an option that he starts. If he starts, we need we need all that he has physically. Maybe he cannot play 90 minutes. So just put everything out there in the first 60. Maybe it's an option. I think we have a crucial four matches coming in another short period of time. Within like uh, two weeks, with uh, Arsenal, West Ham, Man United, and Everton, two home, two away. Crucial matches for us for like giving given the task where we want to be and what we want to achieve. So this is where the focus goes. I think it is. I agree with you. I think it's a it's a big challenge in in terms of physical uh, um, physical challenge, but also mentally to now uh, dive in, in 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 the next competition and in the in the main competition uh, Premier League and uh, given the fact that it seems like things are pretty safe but the things can turn so so quickly with the schedule Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Tukul. A lot of things come into that sort of game. I can they mention that they, they need to keep their confidence and, of course, mental strength. Do you agree? I totally, totally do agree. Um, physical strength is well needed, but sometimes there is only but a point that physical strength can take you. Uh, the mental strength will now take you the, you know, the entire nine yard. Um, just like Liverpool beating Man U, you know, right about now, just like Chelsea, you know, um, like Man City, some of these clubs have built um, a process. They built like uh, a standard with the help of the kind of coaches they have from time and even presently that they work more on their mental strength, even rather than the physical. So they play teams that you see, uh, you know, this team running them ragged for minutes and minutes. And then when they turn up the star, you see them get the result. It's because there is already a build. There is already something like a process. You just get in and fit in whichever player. Look at Liverpool. There is no Jota yet, you know, uh, the likes of Origi. Everybody can just come in, get goals, and leave. There is no Firmino. These are teams that are built like a process, and then you just get in and do well. So Thomas Tuchel understands this, came in, and you can see the uh, level of uh, mentality has also brought to the Chelsea team that have got mentality before. Like I always say, teams like this hardly lose to teams that they shouldn't lose to. They always lose to teams that you feel, okay, 
on the scale 50 50 anybody have got a chance but teams that shouldn't beat them hardly do beat them the one of brentford would always been a one-off so uh i understand what he's saying and that's what you should do as a coach yeah. give give it to the boys and move on uh, yeah, maybe before we listen to Pep Guardiola, let's just take this breaking news for the third time in five seasons. Fulham, they've gained promotion to the English Premier League. This time they've done it with four games to spare. You wonder when they play this sort of good football at the championship, they come to the English Premier League and get relegated. With four games to spare, Fulham, they've, probably, they've gained promotion to the English Premier League after getting a 3-0 home victory over Preston. So congratulations to Fulham. They're coming back to the top league. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations are in order. Uh, my, my thoughts exactly like yours. I just hope they don't find their way back <laughs> <laughs> very soon. <laughs> uh, that's, that's been the case these days. To come up next a season or two, you're, you're down now. there. So uh, I'm hoping that won't be the case uh, for, for them uh, as it is. All right, let's uh, move on, uh, on on the show. Uh, but before we do that, we need to go on a break. Uh, when we return from that break, we talk about Manchester City. We'll also talk about the blockbuster all-British fight between Tyson Fury and Dillian White. That will be after this break. All right, welcome back. We've uh, talked about managers who... Uh, we'll be playing, having matches uh, tomorrow. We just listened to Thomas Tuchel. I think it's only fair that we listen to the Manchester City manager, Pep Guardiola, who will be under pressure, especially now that uh, Liverpool is winning a game that a lot of people thought could, could have been a banana peel for them. Now they're cruising, they're on top of the league. So Pep Guardiola knows his team has to win. And also today, he refused to make comments about Harlan Haaland. Uh, he appears uh, like uh, the young man might be on his way to Manchester City. But first, let's listen to Pep Guardiola, who we'll come back for more on Sports Tonight. The same like uh, last two weeks, or last, yeah, last two, three weeks. So it's the same, one point ahead, and uh, we are going to play every game a final to give opportunity to play another one, another one, until the end. We are going to, to challenge, and at the end, we're going to fight, that's for sure, until the end. We'll try to play good and get results. All right, that's Pep Guardiola uh, speaking his mind. And uh, we're going to enjoy the Premier League till the very end because it appears like these two teams can just stop winning. So we'll see uh, what happens. One thing for sure that uh, is there's no more treble for Manchester City. But for Liverpool, still on course for four titles. And there you have it. It's 4 you now. Liverpool, a proper hammering uh, given to uh, the Red Devils uh, right there at Hanfield. Hammering. Uh, that's what it has turned out to be. Liverpool 4, Manchester United 0. And uh, we are approaching uh, the end of the game. It's six minutes of football played. And there you have it. Mohamed Salah uh, scored and makes it 4. All right, that's the situation report. We have just about two minutes, uh, a few minutes before the end of the show, maybe less than two. But let's talk about a British blockbuster that we are all waiting for. Dillian White and Tyson Fury. Dillian White, I don't know if his mind game, not coming to the presser, not coming for the public walkout, not doing anything, and he's saying, I'm not obliged to. When uh, Tyson Fury defeated Klitschko, he did the same. So why are you coming after me? I'm going to speak in the ring. In a few seconds, the build up to all of this. Yeah. It looks like it wasn't properly promoted because both boxers just shied away from the media. Yeah, it seems so. It seems so. Though uh, uh, Tyson Fury gave us snipers. He left social media for a while. He said, I want to concentrate on this bout yeah, because a lot of talks coming from right, left, and center about the and white and what he can do. Some of us, I'm using some of us because I'm part of them, are written off Dylan White. But talks from here and there is saying, hey, Dylan White, I've got some <laughs> his punch and all of that. So I, I think Tyson Fury uh, really wants to just go into this fight, not minding the level at which Dylan White is right now, and just want to give it a good 
good showing. So, All right. uh, good one. Uh, let's let's enjoy the fight. That's it. Okay. Uh, let's allow Austin to wrap this up for us. Do you believe Tyson Fury, if he says he's going to retire? I've been hearing that a lot. Do you think he's playing with us? He plays with us a lot. Do you think he's playing with us? And do you think he's a bit scared of Dillian White? I don't think he's scared of Dillian White. Um, and I don't think he's playing. What else is there for, for Tyson Fury to prove? Whoever wants to fight him, bring the right money, and you're going to have this man are fighting you in the ring. I'm just a bit disappointed with Dillian White because he's breaking his own focus. He always wanted a shot at the title. He's been calling for it. You have an opportunity now to go for it, fight right here in the UK. I and mean, you might call it right mind games and all of that, but that's still part of your own distraction, you know, and you're not promoting the fight the way you should promote it. You're not the man with the belt. So you're supposed to come all out and prove a point that you want to push this guy who is undisputed, this man who has shown us time and time again that when he's in the ring, he's 100% business oriented. So I, I see this one going all the way for Tyson Fury, but except Dillian White picks himself back up, get into the right state of mind, right here in the UK, we're hearing is about the sharing formula. I mean, it's always has to be about the money, yeah. but Tyson Fury is coming out there, getting the job done, and because he's got everything to lose. All right. Okay. That's a good place to let it land. Obviously, we'll talk some more about this on Thursday. All right. Before we go, Kay Davis, I want to thank you for your time on the show today. Lovely to be back and I uh, had a nice time. All right. Yeah. The conversation. <laughs> of ends. course, it was. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the show today. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. We were happy to do it and we'll be back here again tomorrow to do what we love doing best. I'm Jamie Adebay. Bye, bye. Yes, we'll be back again tomorrow. But until then, I'm Austin O'Connor, man in London, saying, in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports by fire.